Hey everybody out there on the World Wide Web. Chappie here with new survival skills. <clears throat> it's uh, it's Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, and uh, we got uh, a project going on here at uh, NSS headquarters. And uh, I'm gonna step in here for a minute. You might see Mr. Kilgore back there. He's gonna do this demonstration here and show you guys the proper way to uh, waterproof some of your gear. And uh, as you can see by some of the stuff that he's laying out, uh, he's getting ready to uh, set up this demonstration uh, to show you how to waterproof your, your gear and your backpack. And uh, this will be pretty interesting. So uh, just so happens that my EDC is in the way. So I'm gonna move it. And uh, so this will be a pretty good video. It would uh, be very informative for people that are um, going on hikes, long hikes, uh, unexpected weather, topography, terrain, um, you know, whatever may come your way. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to see what Matt has. Uh, this is going to be a first for me because he, uh, he hasn't run this one by me yet. I mean, he has kind of in little pieces, but uh, this could be a surprise. And I might be uh, laughing at the end or crying. So, uh, well, he's laughing, so I'll probably be crying. So uh, stay tuned and see how this one turns out. Hey, guys, I want, I want to talk to you guys real quickly about uh, something that Matt and I picked up out of all places, um, Harbor Freight, right? They have some good stuff. Yeah, yeah Harbor Freight Tools. I don't know for, uh, are they across the country? Do you know I if they're so. on the East Coast too? Uh, we have them out here on the West Coast. Uh, I think they are on the East Coast, but uh, usually they've got some really chintzy stuff, but every once in a while you'll find a, a really good find there. And this is one of them I wanna show you guys. I think we paid like two bucks for these mittens. And they are lined with wool, and uh, they're leather on the outside. Matt got his dirty. I think we did this when we were camping, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here, I'm gonna some of that to make a... Yeah, you can add these wool inserts that you can get at a military surplus store, or you can find online. These are usually about two or three bucks, aren't they? Yeah. So you got like five dollars right here for the wool inserts and then these gloves which were waterproof when we used them and you can actually put snow seal on them you can spray them with snow seal and make them even more waterproof but um for the price man they were like two bucks at harbor freight matt and i took them camping we went uh, up in the back country uh from where we live and it just so happened that when we got up there it was cold and raining and it started snowing later in the night when we woke up in the morning there wasn't a ton of snow like everybody in the east coast is getting frost. but for us there was frost and ice and and these two dollar and something cent gloves from harbor freight really worked so you know you don't always have to go with the top of the line or the uh, name brand gear to to get it done so keep that in mind and uh, stay tuned for more Hey everybody, it's Matt from NewSurvivalSkills.com. Uh, thought you might like the uh, All-American Infidel shirt with Arabic underneath, just to make it clear for anyone who didn't quite understand. You want to know how I really feel? I think that says enough. Yeah, we second that. Third, fourth, fifth it too. So, something I just got in the, in the mail today, or in shipping, a pair of boots that I ordered a while back. There was a question on New Survival Skills website, or on the uh, fan page, about fit your favorite footwear. These are my uh, Altama Exospeed Desert Boots. Um, just got them in the mail today. Um, you know, they're, for, for me personally, I love them. I recommend them to other people. They were recommended to me from a friend, and that's when I got them. Um, they're just good old desert high top boots. They, uh, they really, they fit like running shoes. They're super lightweight. I can, I can walk around town in them all day long. I can go on a hike on them all day long. I can, I can go out running in them. And, uh, They've, uh, so far, I love them. They're, they're great for everything. This, this is a brand new pair. I've got to break them in. They're a little stiff in the heel right at the moment, but give it a day or two, and they're fine. One drawback that I did find with these boots is both pair that I've owned. They came with laces that were uh, 
a little bit short for what's ideal. So I went ahead and took them out and replaced them with, I don't know if you can tell there, but I, I put 550 cord on there to replace that, um, add a little bit of length. Hey everybody, it's Matt with New Survival Skills. Um, I want to talk to you today about a uh, method of waterproofing some gear that might be better than a lot of people just put everything in one uh, waterproof bag. Um, I like to compartmentalize my things more, uh, maybe you, uh, waterproof individual items separately from each other. And uh, what that does is that keeps it from, uh, from having a compromise of, of more than one item at a time. If, if for some reason you, your packer or your waterproof bag should get punctured, um, you're not exposing all of your gear to water, especially if you should fall into a body of water like you're uh, kayaking somewhere, you're river rafting and you, and you capsize, or you're crossing over a stream on a log and you fall in. Um, you can get your pack in the water and uh, even if one or two things are ruptured, you're still going to have everything else dry. So just to start off, and there's another follow-up to this method that, that I'll tell you a little bit later. But uh, it's pretty basic, nothing special, just uh, plain old trash bags from, you know, I got these at the 99 cent store, so you know, it doesn't have to be expensive. When I go about it, stick it in the plastic bag, a pair of jeans there. And you want to try to push as much of the air out of here as possible to keep, save you some space inside your pack. Um, I actually find sometimes when I do this, I can actually get more stuff in here, into a bag, into my pack, than when I don't do this. Um, when you squish out a lot of that air, things will tend to compress much better. Just press it all down. Get as much of that air out of there as possible that you don't need. Some of it's not always going to be completely 100%, but then you want to twist the uh, neck of the bag down as such, and then just simply tie it off. Now if you have a lot of items of clothing in, in your pack, then you're going to want a lot of bags. I've got three boxes of these. Um, Again, this is maybe you want to do is maybe just a few things that, that will stay dry no matter what. But basically, just tie that off, or use a rubber band, or, or whatever you've got. Do your items about like this. Um, okay, one of the things I used to do in the Marine Corps uh, that we used to we used to nickname this the Ranger Roll um, is that you just take a skinny shirt, skinny bottoms, and a pair of socks, and you just lay them on top of each other. You roll them all together. One nice tight roll. As such, nothing fancy. And then you want to take these. Hey, that bag actually smells nice too. It's kind of got a little <laughs> scent to it. Nice. So you take your little Ranger roll, sit that down here at the bottom of the bag, and again, we're going to. Kind of close off as much of the air as possible. Squeeze air out of that. There's going to be a little bit of air left there. It's not 100 percent airtight. Well, will be airtight. Well, it's no. not going to be vacuum packed. It's not going to be vacuum sealed, but you're going to get excess air, therefore saving some space. I'm going to quickly tie this one off because what I can do is compartmentalize this bag and use it for more than one set. One set of skibby socks and a t-shirt wrapped. I can throw one more down. Bam, then you throw that one in there. Maybe I should have got bigger bags. But basically, I'm gonna get that a little tightened up and tie that off. Maybe I can use a rubber band on this one. Be ideal, but I think I can manage to tie that off just like it is. To save time here on this video, we are going to edit this right here. Now that you've seen how Matt's uh, rolling all of these things just like this, we are going to cut the tape and go ahead and roll all of this stuff. And then once we get it rolled, we'll come back and show you how to pack it and where to go from there. Okay, so I've got a few things already waterproofed and I'm starting to put them back down in my pack. I started with my uh, larger items, a couple pairs of pants. 
going down to my large Atlas pack here. And see, as I said, I can compartmentalize one bag so you can use one bag for more than one item. So we're gonna start just loading things in here. Um, you know, the pack itself is not really all that waterproof. It's, you know, it protects you from the rain. But this uh, this method is gonna keep a lot of things And what dry. pack is this? This is the large Atlas pack. And how do you tell the large from the others? The large has this extra row of pockets across the top. Okay, right. so I've loaded my main Atlas pack with waterproofed gear. Um, again, all compartmentalized, so if one or two things rupture, everything else is going to hopefully be uh, uncompromised. I'm going to go ahead and load up my uh, second Atlas pack, which is only a small Atlas pack. I'm going to be loading this thing with unwaterproofed gear, and uh, in a few minutes, well, it'll be almost instantaneous for you. We are going to demonstrate one of the other advantages of having a waterproofed pack versus a not waterproofed pack. And uh, I think you're going to get a kick out of it if it works the way it always has for me in the past. I've uh, got my pack all packed up with my waterproof gear. And um, again, you know, this keeps, if you have one rupture in one chamber, you don't get everything wet. Um, so your items are individually waterproofed. Um, topic that Chappie brought up a while back is what if you fell into a river at some point like that and you, uh, you lost your gear. Um, one of the main reasons people might lose their gear if they fall into water is they got to drop it because it gets heavy and it sinks. Um, you know, it keeps them from being able to swim. Well, one thing about waterproofing your gear is that uh, it shouldn't sink. And sure enough, I'm not even treading water right now. My pack is keeping me afloat. I could probably pull it underwater. Yeah, I'm trying to go down right now, and I can't even get underwater. So by having my pack uh, waterproofed, it is floating. I don't have to jettison my gear. Um, it'll keep me above water. I don't have to worry about drowning so much. Um, I don't lose my gear, it's, and when I get myself to shore, it's going to be dry, and I'm going to have dry clothes to change into and get cold or get warm. Um, and again, if you let it sit up high like it is on my back right now, uh, let me demonstrate something here. As I lean back into my pack, and I bicycle kick my feet, I'm not pushing myself backwards. In fact, I'm actually pulling myself in the direction that my feet are. It's slow going, but if you're in a still body of water, obviously you can paddle with your hands, but say you're, you were hunting and you've got a rifle or whatever, you don't want to lose that rifle, you, your feet will get you where you need to be. Uh, you can, you know, so if your boat capsizes, you're, uh, your raft, your canoe, you fall off a log into the water. If your gear is waterproofed, you're not likely to lose it. Now, if, you get it, if you're in water with a current, yeah, your pack, if it wasn't on you, could be swept downstream away from you, but it's gonna float, it's probably gonna wash up on the shore somewhere, and you should be able to recover it. One second here. Another great thing is that you fall out of the water, you can always just, uh, if you don't have it strapped on you, get hold of it, get up on top of it, and float. You got more people, more than one person in your party, and uh, they've all got their gear waterproofed accordingly. And say one person is incapacitated, whether they're unconscious or uh, they're whatever, they can't really swim on their own, but they're still alive, they're conscious, they're breathing. You just want to make sure that, they don't, that they're heads going to stay out of the water, they can continue to breathe. You can put more than one pack together uh, and get that person up on top of the pack like I just demonstrated. Keep them up, keep their head up above water and then uh, tow, them to, tow them to shore. Um, and so just, uh, you know, a lot of reasons to waterproof your pack.